Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling spaghetti carbonara. Now, oftentimes when people make this at home, they end up with scrambled eggs. Today I'm gonna to share with you a foolproof method in making spaghetti carbonara at home. So let's get started. Well, the first step in making spaghetti carbonara is with the pasta itself. So I have about a pound of pasta here. And one of the really great things I wanna show you guys, this is a beautiful brand of pasta. It's actually made in a classic style. If you can see, the pasta itself isn't smooth. It has some texture to it. And this is really fantastic because it's gonna help the sauce cling on to the noodles themselves. So. If you can find spaghetti, or even you could use a different cut of pasta as well, but make sure it has this texture, this chalkiness to it, because in the end, it's gonna give you a really fantastic dish. So I have a large pot of water here, and I'm going to season this with some salt. So it's always you know, a best practice to aggressively season your water with salt so that you're imparting some flavor onto your pasta. I'm going to put this into the pot, and this is gonna cook for about seven to eight minutes. You don't want to overcook your pasta, so make sure that you set a timer, and you can give this a little bit of a stir so that everything is submerged in the water itself. While we are cooking our spaghetti here, I'm going to start on the sauce. And the sauce is really, really simple and super velvety and creamy. The confusion that may exist is that carbonara has cream in it. It actually doesn't. It solely relies on the starchy water from your pasta and eggs to make a really fantastic velvety sauce. To start this, one of the other classic ingredients is a little bit of pancetta. Now, pancetta is what I would say, it's an Italian style bacon. It's cured, but it's not smoked like American bacon. So it has no smoky flavor and it's cured with a lot of salt and sometimes spices. So it has a really fantastic flavor. Pancetta is widely available here in the United States. So that's why we're using it in this recipe. But if you can find its cousin, I'll say it's called guanciale and guanciale is a cured version similar to pancetta, but it's, it's from the cheek of the pig as opposed to pancetta, which is the pork belly. So more similar to bacon. And what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting this into decent size cubes. I think they're about maybe a half of an inch in size. And I'm going to start cooking them in this pot that's actually cold. It's not hot, the heat's not going. And the reason I'm doing this, and I'm gonna put it on maybe like a medium heat, is the temperature, as it warms up the pancetta, it will allow a lot of the fat in the pancetta to kind of render out. And that's really what we're looking for, because that's gonna give us nice crispy bits of pancetta in the end. While the pancetta cooks, I'm going to start cracking my eggs. I'm using four whole eggs here today for this recipe. There are a lot of different recipes that exist out there. Some use a mixture of whole eggs and egg yolks, but really this recipe, it should be simple. There are only a few ingredients and it doesn't need to be complicated. In my opinion, just using whole eggs is totally fine. Now you wanna make sure because these eggs don't necessarily cook fully, it's not like you're making scrambled eggs, uh, you wanna make sure you're using really high quality farm fresh eggs if you can find them. And I'm just cracking them into a small bowl here and I'm gonna beat these up a little bit just to break them up. And you wanna make sure that they're really well combined. There are no bits of egg white that aren't mixed in with the yolk. So you really want a nice homogenous mixture here. Carbonara, it's actually a Roman dish. So oftentimes a Pecorino Romano cheese is used in carbonara. And that's what I have today. I'm using a mixture of Romano and also Parmesan. Two aged cheeses that have a nice bit of salt to them. And the Parmesan really does lend a nice creaminess to the carbonara and that pecorino adds a real punch of salinity. This is mixing up. I'm gonna stir this pancetta around a little bit. If you notice here that the pan is a little bit too dry, you can add a tiny bit of olive oil. This will help to encourage the fat to really render out of the pancetta without smoking the pot too much here. And this will take anywhere from three to four minutes for the pancetta to get nice and crisp and brown. So the pancetta is crisping up nicely. You can see it's picking up some really great color. 
We're getting nice brown bits on the bottom of this pan, which is flavor. And to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. I have minced garlic. Now, this isn't necessarily classic to this recipe. It just adds a little bit of flavor, but if you wanted to be a purist, you could totally omit the garlic. I'm gonna turn the heat off here now because we don't want the garlic to burn. And to my eggs, I'm going to add the cheeses. I'm using a combination of two different cheeses, as I mentioned before. This is a half a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese. And then I also have a quarter of a cup of finely grated Pecorino. So I'm going to take this pan now and I'm gonna remove it from the heat because I wanna stop the cooking process and I wanna cool the pan down a little bit. This is a real trick. When you're making carbonara and you're, you're going to add the eggs to the pasta, you wanna make sure that there's no direct heat. Otherwise your eggs will start to scramble. So pulling off of the heat, this pot, it's exactly what you want. You don't wanna hear any sizzling and you want it to cool down. Not completely, you want it to be warm because you need to cook the eggs until they're nice and silken. While we're waiting for this to cool down and our pasta is almost finished, I'm gonna season the pancetta and the garlic here with a good amount of ground pepper. Freshly ground pepper is a key characteristic, a key taste in carbonara. So you wanna make sure that it's freshly milled. So that looks good. I have about a half a teaspoon of ground pepper here. Let's check our pasta, which you want to be nice and um, al dente. You don't want it to be overcooked. So let's see, looks good. There's still a tiny bit of kind of white in the very center of the pasta and that's what you're looking for. So I'm just going to turn the heat off. I'm gonna add the pasta. You could certainly drain this in a colander if you want, but I like to do it this way just so that I get even more water, more of that starchy, salty water mixed in to the pancetta and that fat that's in the bottom of the pan here. Pasta carbonara. This is something that you want to do a la minute, right before you're ready to serve it. So make sure your guests are sitting down at the table and they're ready for you to come with a hot pot of pasta for you guys. So mix this together. I'm gonna add a little bit of pasta water. So take some of that out. This is something that you wanna save. Don't dump all of this. Pour it into the pasta. I have about maybe a quarter of a cup to a half of a cup here. Stir it around. And now I'm going to add my eggs and the Parmesan cheese right into my pasta here. You want to toss this around. I'm gonna add the Pecorino cheese. Right to the pot. And stir this around until the sauce starts to thicken and becomes really great and velvety and it surrounds the noodles. And this will be a fantastic carbonara. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper to this, a little bit more freshly ground pepper. And the residual heat from the pan and that hot pasta water really does cook the eggs. Now, if you were nervous about adding eggs like this to your pasta, you could certainly pasteurize your own eggs if you wanted to. Just use a double boiler and you can heat them up to about 160 degrees if you want. But that's the real beauty of this dish is that you get this wonderful, creamy, rich, almost custardy sauce with eggs and that beautiful pasta water and there's no cream added to this dish. I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. It is creamy, velvety. It smells so good. Just the pancetta, the pepper, and those two wonderful cheeses. Just a few pieces of pancetta on top. And there you have it a beautiful spaghetti carbonara that is not scrambled. It's nice and creamy and velvety. And the great thing about this is that you basically make it in eight to 10 minutes, as long as it takes the pasta to cook. If you have any kitchen conundrums, any pasta conundrums, baking conundrums, whatever they may be, reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. Enjoy guys. And as always guys, click like and subscribe.